Today's top stories at NBR, Ngaitahu holding stake in Sanford, Allbirds gets ready for NASDAQ, Main Freight keeps trucking through COVID, and there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, a wrap of the day's top business stories from the authority in New Zealand business news since 1970, nbr.co.nz. It's Wednesday, September 1st. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks so much for joining us. The country's stock of supermarket toilet paper is coming under pressure, not because of COVID-related panic buying, but because two suppliers, with roughly a third of the consumer market between them, have decided to withdraw from New Zealand supermarkets as their margins are too small. US-based Kimberly Clark is understood to have given notice some three or four months ago that it would be pulling Australian-made Kleenex toilet paper from local supermarkets, where it had a roughly 7% consumer market share. A more recent withdrawal from the local market has also been seen signalled by Australia's ABC Tissue, suppliers of Quilton toilet paper and its green brand Earthcare, which currently commanded roughly a quarter of all toilet paper sales within Countdown Supermarket. Ngaitahu Holdings says the 19.9% stake it's seeking to build in listed seafood company Sanford is a good fit with its existing businesses and that the iwi will bring sector expertise. The South Island iwi told NBR it's in for the long term and anticipates more direct engagement and collaboration over time, but it has no takeover intentions. A disclosure by Sanford to the NZX late this morning said Ngaitahu Investments had, at that time, bought 7,325,436 fully paid ordinary shares in Sanford for a total of $40,289,898. Allbirds, the shoe and apparel company co-founded by Kiwi ex-all-white footballer Tim Brown, has filed preparatory documents for an IPO on the US Nasdaq exchange. The SEC filing, dated August 31st, does not predict a value for the IPO, nor does it specify how the proceeds will be used, but anticipates the stock will be listed under the ticker BIRD. The company most recently raised US $100 million in a Series E funding round from large investment firms led by New York Stock Exchange listed Franklin Templeton, leading to an estimated value of US $1.7 billion. ACT leader David Seymour is frustrated the government is not sharing all the information it has on the current COVID-19 outbreak. Seymour said if the government was more open and provided National and ACT with more information, that would allow the opposition parties to be more constructive. David Seymour joined NBR's political editor, Brent Edwards. To see those that are elected and those that are responsible for government in the flesh, and I think we saw quite a lot, we saw some pretty snarky comments from a government under pressure, quite different from their usual stage managed performance. And sometimes the questions they can't answer are more revealing than anything. For instance, I asked Chris Hipkins the the very simple question, um, if level four conditions are working, how, how many cases have been transmitted from one bubble to another? Because the whole point of level four is to stay in your bubble. Um, and he, he couldn't answer that. Act leader David Seymour with Brent Edwards there. Three directors of struggling venture capital investor Powerhouse Ventures have quit the board just three months after being installed by rebel shareholders, with their places being taken by the people they forced out. It appears the Christchurch-based ASX-listed science and tech investment company's board leapt before they were pushed, after 14.4% investor Financial Clarity formally sought their removal in a filing to the Stock Exchange published on July 28, requesting a shareholder meeting and vote. Peter McGrath, Timothy Hannan and Lachlan Armstrong were added to the board in May 2021 when three investors, Raven Investment Holdings, Amherst Developments and the Ramsey Finance Group had also demanded a special meeting to force the changes. Listed logistics firm Main Freight has released a trading update to the NZX, suggesting that the current Level 4 and Level 3 lockdowns across New Zealand are having less of an impact on transportation than initially expected. In fact, while the company says transport revenues have dropped a third post-lockdown, less than anticipated, warehousing and activity in its air and ocean division continues unabated, and revenues are up by a third in the local segment of the business overall. The full details of those stories and more are at nbr.co.nz right now. Tomorrow at NBR, in his politics column, Brent Edwards says political theatrics should have been kept out of the debate this week over Parliament sitting, while Andrew Bevan looks at the future of office space under Delta. I'm Paul Brennan. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow around lunchtime for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then same time, same place, right here from 5.30 again tomorrow for another NBR Today.